It's no secret that blockchain holds the potential to revolutionize so many different things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Whether it's the money that we use, the video games that we play, the internet that we interact with, it's a massive game changer. But beyond these things, blockchain even has the power to transform the cities that we live our day-to-day -day lives in, to create you know, futuristic metropolises just like you see in the movies. And in this video, I wanna talk about what the future of crypto cities could look like and how this could potentially change everything. I'm gonna talk about that as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. How can crypto and blockchain completely transform the cities that we live in, you know, day in, day out? Well, one of the reasons I'm making this video is because I saw a recent news article come up about how Miami's mayor says residents will receive a Bitcoin dividend in a Miami coin wallet. So basically, Miami started using a city token derived from the city coins protocol, and the protocol actually generates revenue for the city when residents mine the tokens. And those running the software receive 70% of the coins, and they mint 30% returning to the municipality in a city wallet. So this project has been a boom for Miami. They made $7.1 million since the protocol's launch in August, and at this stage, they've made over $21 million for the project total. So this is a game changer on multiple levels for, you know, the residents. Um, it's possible to help alleviate the tax burden from some Miami residents. And for some, it's going to be a complete windfall. And so they actually have plan to implement this is to pay out uh, the rewards for these and to Bitcoin to yield across, you know, its citizens. So this is a crazy way to reward people who live in your city and, you know, actually attract other people to come to your local area, which could have, you know, massive benefits for economic activity, all that type of stuff. And so this could be a game changer that we see this pattern play out across multiple cities if this experiment becomes, you know, long-term successful. So now we're seeing adoption of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology by state, you know, local, national governments. And that's a growing trend. We've seen, you know, Bitcoin become legal tender in El Salvador. We see how my, Miami's doing, um, you know, these Bitcoin dividends with the mining like we're talking about here. So what makes this work? Well, the utility value of the cryptocurrencies themselves and also these incentives. And this is just one example, but what are some other ways that cryptocurrencies could transform, you know, where we live day in, day out in our cities and not just how we, you know, spend our online activity on the internet? Well, there's actually a much more comprehensive post on this by Vitalik Buterin, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum himself on crypto cities and what these could look like in the future, you know? And so inside this, he cites what's happening with Miami and the, the greater citycoins.co project and lots of other things like how Wyoming has now become Dow friendly legal structure, Colorado's experimenting with quadratic voting and other projects, as he would say here, with varying degrees of radicalness, cul-de-sac, Telosa, City Dow, and others that are basically trying to make entire neighborhoods and cities from scratch. And he's saying that he's seeing this trend of the last year where there's been rapid mainstream adoption of crypto ideas such as coins, non-fungible tokens, and decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs. And so in this post, he talks about what could happen if we combine these two trends together. It doesn't make sense to have a city with a coin, an NFT, a DAO, some record keeping on chain for anti-corruption, or even all four. And he gives lots of examples of people who are already doing this. So let's actually break this down use case by use case and see how you could apply, you know, blockchain technology that we have today that actually works to cities, how some people are experimenting with it and where that could go in the future. So let's start off with the first thing, which is just currency. So this is a, probably the easiest one for most people to understand because, you know, cryptocurrency just replaces something very obvious, coins that we use for as a medium of exchange. But there could be significant impact beyond just using a digital dollar that's stable that we might use to pay for things. Okay, so that's level one is just, you know, replacing the currency we have, you know, as, as currency. But Taking it a step further, what if we could take other cryptocurrencies and actually make them legal tender? Well, there's lots of different implications of what it means to actually make other currencies legal tender. So, for example, you could be in a taxable situation where if you use something to pay for it and the price increases, you're not paying a capital gains tax on that because it is legal tender. Okay, so that's that could be one benefit. Um, there's lots of other things, benefits you get by a currency being a legal tender. Another one is yield, like we talked about before. So. What happens if you now have incentive to earn certain assets that are a special medium of exchange in your city? And these assets actually appreciate in price, number one. And then number two, they also uh, have yield to where you can have liquid income, you know, off of those currencies themselves as they appreciate in price and maybe, you know, track with inflation or something like that. That's going to create massive incentives for people to actually 
you know, come to your cities that are crypto friendly that can provide these monetary benefits. And this could see an explosion of economic activity based on these incentives and have a ton of impact on, you know, just the growth of the cities overall. All right. So next thing I want to talk about is what you could do with decentralized autonomous organizations in cities. So what does that mean? So a decentralized autonomous organization is a DAO. You might have heard that word if you've been, you know, hanging out in the crypto space. So basically what this means is just something that like like a set of smart contracts on the blockchain that actually governs uh, how something else works and other people vote and are members of this DAO to basically influence the decisions. And so that's a pretty clear one-to-one relationship in the function of what just voting does to elect people and make decisions in a city to what you could potentially do with a DAO. Now, I'm not saying every city is just going to you know, wipe clean uh, its entire method for how it does now, but I could see people you know, experimenting with DAOs for certain parts of that stack, so to speak, and maybe even potentially replacing the entire thing over time as that technology becomes more secure. There's lots of benefits in this, uh, preventing fraud, transparency, all this type of stuff that it really holds the potential to completely change how it works now for the better. All right, so another major piece of technology that we have now that could be applied to cities are non-fungible tokens or NFTs, okay? So we talk about cryptocurrencies and how you could use those as legal tender, you know, tokenize assets, whatever it is, then the next logical step might be NFTs or non-fungible tokens. So these work differently from cryptocurrencies. You know, people, most people associate NFTs with like artwork and collectibles. That's the thing that they, you know, have seen a lot of. But really the underlying technology behind NFTs can extend way beyond that because fundamentally an NFT is just a non-fungible token. It's a token where each token is worth a different amount than the other one because they're unique. All right. So the, you, you know, non-fungible is the adjective here, the operative word. So fungible versus non-fungible. Fungible means I can trade anything for a similar item of that collection. So I could trade one Bitcoin for one Bitcoin. It doesn't matter which Bitcoin I have. That's fungible versus non-fungible, which means, uh, you know, if you have a CryptoPunk, for example, like a crypto collectible, it matters which CryptoPunk that you have because they're worth, you know, different uh, amounts and they're not as you know scarce as another one. So one pretty easy example of how this could apply to cities is, well, what are other non-fungible assets that you can pretty easily think of inside of a city? Well, real estate, okay? Because, you know, what's the old adage in real estate? Location, location, location. That's one pretty simple example of why, you know, different uh, properties are worth more or less than others. The size of the property itself finishes all that type of stuff. But the whole point here is real estate in and of itself is, you know, non-fungible in this way. So you could essentially have, you know, property rights that are controlled by NFTs in terms of physical property in this way. And this could actually have a pretty big efficiency benefit because right now, whenever you buy and sell real estate, there's a lot of record keeping that happens like literally on paper at the city level. It's so out of date, it's not even funny. And you could potentially replace this with, you know, NFTs and blockchain in a crypto city. You could also do stuff like tokenizing real estate, let other people buy it, and a lot more. Now, there's two other use cases um, that kind of fall under this umbrella of what you could do in a crypto city. You know, one is is kind of a little bit of a repli- a little bit of a duplicate of some of the other things I've talked about, but it sort of joins them together, which is just general on-chain record keeping and how this is a massive benefit for cities for transparency reasons for for you know uh, making auditing so much easier. So we talked about cryptocurrencies keeping that information on chain so that it can you know really be easily verified, audited, tamper proof, all that type of stuff. Voting on chain, you know, uh, tamper proof secure. Same thing with property, with you know, NFTs. It, 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 the transparency, the ability to audit information very quickly. You could you could just basically turn this into any type of important record keeping that has to happen by a local government. Just stick it on chain in some form or fashion and you can get a massive efficiency benefit out of this. All right, now the last use case that's kind of an interesting one, and that's how you could actually improve lotteries. <laughs> okay, so we already have, you know, lotteries that are connected to state and local governments in many ways. Okay, and you could actually uh, improve this with blockchain. So Vitalik actually talks about this in his blog post about fair random number generators for lotteries. So um, basically, VDS, such as the one Ethereum is expected to include, could serve as fair random number generator that could be used to make government-run lotteries more trustworthy. Because at the end of the day, you don't know how they're picking the lottery numbers right now. And even if it's not rigged in, in the sense of like they've predetermined the number, then you don't know how good the randomness is of the you know algorithms that they're using to generate the random numbers in the first place. You know, fairness and random number generation is not always as easy and straightforward as it sounds. And what Vitalik is talking about here is actually using the fairness uh, from you know Ethereum's ability to generate random numbers in the future. And lotteries could be one example of this. All right, so these are some examples of how you know blockchain and crypto could completely transform the cities that we live in day in day out. You know, today. So 
we're really just scratching the surface on what's even possible with this. I mean, we have so many people that are doing experiments and seeing what works, but there's lots of potential here for the future. And I really think that this is uh, one area that can change a lot over the next decade as I expect blockchain technology to continue on the rapid pace of adoption that it is. Again, this is a technology that's being adopted twice as fast as the internet is at this point in time compared to the amount of users that the internet had, which is about 150 million, kind of like the internet was in 1998. And I expect cities to continue on with this trend, just like currencies, NFTs, gaming, metaverse, all this stuff. But I do think we're at the infancy uh, of this particular area of adoption. So it's going to be really interesting to see what plays out and to see how some of the things we're talking about in this video today, whether they come true and what new use cases that we didn't even talk about today end up taking taking place. So that's all I got for today. And as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It really helps these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. I like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I actually become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.